Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and let's learn how we can create in-game achievements in Unity. So basically what we're going to do in this first tutorial is create the ability to have a, an achievement pop up when we've collected so many things. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with this series and everything else that I have on my channel. And with that in mind, let's get designing. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually create a simple GUI for the actual achievement to pop up on. And we can obviously do that by going game object UI and we'll start with a panel. Panel is going to be the one that contains most of the information. So if we double click it and we'll get it into uh, place. So we'll have it on the top left, I think. So kind of in this area of the screen. Uh, I'm going to zero out the position and also change the size and width, but I'll do this via a, my rect tool. So let's bring that into position. So I'm not going to have it too big. This is mainly down to how you want it to look, I think. So I'm not going to spend too much time designing how the pop-up will look. But generally, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing. You, you should probably see what I'm kind of going for here. I'm going to go for a black background. Uh, let's have it completely black. There we go. And that should do. So next thing I want to do is add in a picture. Nice and simple. So on the panel, I'm going to add in more UI and I'll go with raw image. Uh, shrink it down just a little bit. It's a bit too big. So 90 by 90. Maybe a bit smaller. 80. 80. I'm going to anchor that on the left and then move it into position about there. And I'm going to drag and drop. 01 collect, which is this little uh, image that I want as the achievement icon, onto there. And next thing I'm going to do is rename this as 01 underscore collect. So we're going to make this so we're able to build multiple achievements into one single scene, one single script. So you, you'll see how it all works. I'll rename the panel as well, just to say achievement panel just so we know what it is. So the next thing we're going to want to do is a title of the achievement as well as the description. And we can do that inside the achievement panel as well. So right click UI and text. Uh, I'm going to have it white. But again, this is all down to your design preference. It's entirely up to you. This is also going to be customizable. So basically, once we've got all of this set up, it becomes a lot easier in the future to actually develop an achievement. So this is probably going to be the longest of the tutorials. So I'm actually going to type the name of this uh, this achievement, and it'll be just collection, I guess. But I want to see how this looks just for now. So we're going to delete this later on and do it via the script anyway. Uh, let's have it bold, and let's have it 20. In fact, let's have it a bit more, maybe 24. Stretch it so it fits in, and we'll have it about there. And I'm going to right-click, rename, and call it achieve title hold control press d to duplicate bring it down and this is going to be the description so i guess our description could be well something relevant i guess we'll, we'll do what it's supposed to be created a collection based achievement so obviously it's going to be a little bit smaller let's have that as 20 probably not bold either and also drag that down so we have multi-line. There we go. So basically, when I press play, this is how it should look on our screen when it hopefully pops up. So you can see the process of what I'm aiming for at the moment. So that's all good and well. What we need to do now is basically create the script that allows us to trigger this particular achievement. So that's the design phase and this design phase thing is something that you should probably take a little bit more time on don't you know don't rush it you get it looking how you want but this is the basic mechanics of how it's all going to work so what do we need to do now well let's uh, actually rename this first so we'll have this as achieve desk short for description and at the same time i'm actually going to delete those out and I'm actually going to get rid of that as well. So I'm going to turn off that. So basically, it's just nothing on there because we're going to get to the point where we have multiple achievements. So we'll need multiple images. And for now, let's turn off the achievement panel. Uh, right click, create and C sharp script. And we'll call this global 
achievements. Now, I'm not going to explain every line of code because I'm hoping most of you guys are not beginners at Unity. If you are a beginner, I have a nice little two-hour tutorial series which will bring you up to speed for all the basics in Unity. And if you have a look on my channel, playlists, you'll be able to find it there. If you're not, let's get coding. So first thing we're going to want to do is add in the namespace because we'll be using UI elements. So using unity engine.ui semicolon. And we're going to need to declare quite a few variables because we've got multiple things going on. So I'm going to get rid of void start because we don't need it. And I'm going to put annotations in this so we don't get confused. So we're going to start with general variables. So these are something that will be related to every single one of the achievements, not just the uh, specific one we're creating in this tutorial. So public game object, and I'll just call this atch note. So this will be the notification, this panel, that's what that is relating to, and that will be involved in every single one of the achievements. Next one, we're going to have uh, an achievement sound, so that's going to be an audio source. And I'll call this one Atch Sound. So obviously Atch is short for achievement. Also, we're going to have a bool because we need to check if we're currently triggering an achievement or not. So public bool, that will be Atch Active. By default, we'll have it as false because we won't be triggering by default. So next, these are all going to be specific to the, this first achievement. So, achievement 01 specific. I remember these are just annotations, so not lines of code. So for this one, we're going to need a variable for the image, the name, description. Uh, we'll also need one for the counter, uh, the amount required to trigger and we'll also need some extra code in there that says yes we've already triggered this so we can't trigger it again just so the achievement doesn't pop up every time we collect a certain amount of something so the first one public game object and this is going to be h01 image so that image that we brought in square one next one is going to be the title so public uh, game object um, h01 title <coughs> excuse me uh, next one public game object and this is the description so h01 desk short for description there uh, the next one is going to be the counter now this one's going to be a little bit different because this one has to be a static because we need a script on whatever we're collecting to reference the achievement the, this global achievement script so public static int and it's going to be h01 count next we need to create one for the amount required to trigger the achievement and i'm going to put this as a variable in case you ever need to change it for example in the inspector panel so public int h01 trigger by default we'll make it five i guess and finally we need a code which allows us to say yes we've already triggered it i want to put this as a random um integer which i guess could be one two three four five uh, so public int h01 code semicolon and anything else under there will be specific to achievement two then achievement three and anything else so the way we're going to do this is in void update we need to constantly monitor if our count, which is this one, is equal to our trigger amount, which is this one, and we haven't triggered it already. So to do that, we need to go if, and in brackets, h01 count is equal to h01 trigger, and so we've got the double ampersand there, we also need to check that h01 code is not equal to uh, we said one two three four five didn't we so one two three four five close bracket open curly bracket and if both of those return the possibility of this if statement then we start the coroutine which will allow us to trigger that achievement so start co routine and in brackets 
trigger zero one hatch oh, close bracket close bracket semicolon so what we're saying here is the first time we actually trigger this we're going to say hatch code is not it's going to be equal to zero isn't it so when we do reach the trigger of five both of these are going to be true so this will activate so what we need to do now is actually create that coroutine so if we go underneath void update we need to go i enumerator and it was called trigger zero one hatch open close bracket and open curly bracket so the first thing we're going to want to do is set the bool to true because we are activating an achievement so hatch uh, active equals true semicolon we're also going to set that code as one two three four five so it'll be h01 code equals one two three four five semicolon we also then need to store that in a player pref now the reason we store that in a player pref is because we can actually use it down here or rather up here i should say in void update when we finish this whole trigger so the last thing we're going to do is put in that last option using player press but we need to set that player pref when we've triggered it so it'll be player prefs dot set int and in brackets and quotes the name of this achievement so i'm going to keep everything uniform and just call it h01 so h01 will always relate to this first achievement and we want to put in there the value of uh, one two three four five in this case is h01 code uh, close bracket semicolon so at this point our player pref h01 is now equal to one two three four five after this let's have that sound play so h o uh, in fact it's just h sound isn't it dot play open close bracket semicolon after that we need to set achievement 01 image active so h01 image dot set active true semicolon after that we then need to change the uh, title description and i guess the clever thing about this is rather than have these specific to uh, achievement one we could actually take these out of that section and place them in the general and rename them in fact i've done image there i shouldn't have done image i should have done title and description sorry so if we take the title and description out of achievement one and keep them as general that'll save a little bit of time so there where we've got a uh, public arch title it's always going to be the same object we just can change the text can't we so in that case it's going to be h title dot get component spiky brackets text open close bracket dot text equals and it was a collection and um, put an exclamation mark there why not close bracket semicolon so next we have to change the description so h description dot get component text dot text equals uh, created a collection based achievement quote semicolon now we actually have to set the whole thing active now so that will mean h note dot set active true semicolon and now what we have to do is wait because we want that to display for let's say seven seconds and after seven seconds we reset everything so when we can trigger another achievement no problem so yield return new wait for seconds seven semicolon and now what i'm going to do is use another annotation just double slash there and put resetting ui just so we know what's happening here so we need to set h01 image set active false so we get rid of it and next uh, the title and description so we can copy these two lines of code again place them here and they're going to equals nothing because there's no no need for them to still say 
what they need to say. And next, we're going to have... Um, what do we need to do? So we need to actually set it off as well. So first thing we'll do when we're setting the UI, we'll have atch note.set active false. And then finally, the last thing we'll do is actually set that bool back as false because we have it up here set true. So atch active uh, in fact, act equals false. Yeah, it's a bool, isn't it? <laughs> So there we go. That basically is the top and bottom of how we can trigger it. The last thing we do need to do is in void update, we need to make sure that we pull this player pref through. So h01 code equals player prefs dot set int and in brackets and quotes the name that we've already got right here. So if we've already activated that achievement, then this will never ever trigger again because we've already set it. So there's no possible way that we can do it. As that, sorry, that should be get, um, get. So it should be get int, not set, because we've set it there. So we've set the number. We just need to get it on void update. So let's save that script. So to, uh, if, if you, need, you need any more information on this, you know, just uh, leave a comment below and I'll try and explain a little bit more. It can be a little bit daunting for a beginner, something like this, but this script is something we'll build upon over and over and over until we have all the achievements that we want. So heading back into Unity, what we'll need to do is add in an, that achievement sound as an audio file. So on FPS controller, right click, create empty, and we'll call this just achievement. And I'm going to drag and drop that onto there and untick play on awake. Uh, next thing to do, let's actually create something that we can collect. So let's go to our FPS controller, zoom in. I'm just going to create a couple of cubes around. So let's just have game object, uh, 3D object cube. Let's bring it down somewhere that we can actually collect it. So probably about there. Uh, tick is trigger on it and let's create a quick script which allows us to pick up that cube. So create a new C-sharp script and collect cube. So whether you've got a collectible of coins, whether you're a collectible of a gem, it'd be the similar sort of thing. So we can get rid of all that and all we need to do is let's have that audio sound as well so we know we've collected it. So public audio source uh, collect sound semicolon and it's going to be void on trigger enter because that's what it's going to be we actually collect it that way and the main line of code is global achievements dot h01 count plus equals one semicolon that is the main line of code and obviously we'll do collect sound dot play and here you can either like whether you turn it off or destroy the game object it's entirely up to you but i'm just going to put this dot set in fact i could just put set active in fact do you know what i'll just destroy it uh, sometimes i can never decide what i want to do i kind of work around and do whatever i want okay so save that script and let's just add that to the cube right there. When it's compiled, it's thinking. Okay, and let's quickly create a collect sound. I have this ding, which I'm just going to attach onto the collect sound. Add that to the cube. And finally, game object. And it's gonna be empty, and this will be our achievement log or something like that. Drag and drop global achievement script onto there and we just need to set those variables. So the atch note is the achievement notification right there. Achievement sound is that one. Achievement description. Achievement title. And achievement image. And I'm going to save my scene. So the next thing we need to do is take this cube and let's duplicate 
a couple of times. So we've got a couple to collect. And let's press play. So I'm going to have my achievement log active so we can see it here. And now let's try and trigger that achievement. There we go. Created a collection based achievement. And there it goes. And you can see the H01 code is now 12345. So the general idea of how all this works is really simple because now we'll be able to click five again and the achievement will not trigger because we already have that done. It's already triggered. So we can only trigger that achievement once unless we reset those player preps. So guys, I hope this little introduction of how we can create achievements in a game has inspired you because I really like the idea of in-game achievements. It just gives a little bit extra to a game that you wouldn't otherwise have. Because I am a big fan of uh, achievements and trophies. I, I do like trying to collect them. I'm not fantastic, but I do enjoy it. So next tutorial, we'll probably look at, well, obviously collecting another type of achievement. So guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.